Good morning and welcome to my channel. My name is Arin Singh Rana and in today's video, I'll be explaining you how do we fetch data from an API and what how do we use and use effect. So as you can see that uh, it is a, the or this is the objective of our uh, today's video, which is that uh, fetch the data from dummy JSON uh, and use the product uh, API to display the uh, data in the card. So API reference is this uh, API as you can see that it's in white color. Uh, so as you can see that this is the API that we need to use and uh, this is the example output. So you can see that uh, we are getting a list of 15 products in the card style and the data is being uh, fetched and being used inside the card from uh, the API and being displayed inside the card as you can see that over here. So coming to my code, uh, this is as you can see that this is my code. Now uh, to fetch uh, the data from uh, our API, I'm using a library inbuilt, uh, sorry, a library uh, that is known as Axios. Now to use the Axios, what we need to do is that uh, we need to uh, go to our uh, main uh, directory uh, in which our React, pro uh, React project is currently in. And when we are on that in that directory, then what we need to do, we need to install our Axios library. How do we do that? We have to write the command which is npm i uh, i means install it is an abbreviation or you can simply write install as well. So npm install uh, axios so it would uh, install the library of the axios in our current react project. Uh, so after that what we need to do is that uh, we need to import our axios from the axios library as you can see that this is this import command is for that only. Now uh, how I am using it so this is uh, as you can see that this is app.js. Uh, let me show you how the output would look like. Uh, so uh, just a second. As you can see that this is my output. Uh, this These are the cards uh, that I have created that has been created uh, as much the data is coming uh, corresponding to the length of data. So as you can see that these are the card and each and every card is different or you can say that according to the data that I'm getting from my uh, API. So how is that happening? Uh, so uh, First, I uh, created a use state variable which will store my arrays of object. Uh, and how what is my arrays of object? So array is the uh, you can say that array is the product a different product uh, products object uh, stores the uh, different products object. So each uh, object represents a single product inside my array. So as you can see that first, I created a const type uh, use state uh, which is data which will store my uh, array. And you can see that this is the default uh, value for my use state, which is the empty array symbols. Uh, sorry, empty brackets, which means that uh, empty array. So after that, I, uh, as you can see that first, I imported my use state and I used it over here. Then I also imported my uh, use effect uh, to use it over here. Now, what's the use of uh, use effect? Uh, now, use effect is a hook uh, which allows us to perform side effects on a component whenever there is a changes in there, there is changes in the uh, dependencies array. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, I'm using my use effect for my fetching uh, for fetching the data from the uh, dummy.json server uh, or API. So how am I doing that? Uh, inside my use effect, I created an arrow function and arrow function defines another function, which is an async function. So uh, what happens uh, with the async function is that uh, whenever we want to put a function uh, into an asynchronous category, which means that uh, the uh, for the uh, next date uh, for the next command line to execute the uh, the command line is not dependent on the previous uh, command line or previous interpretation. Uh, it give, it is a, a kind of a pr uh, promise system. It means it means that uh, it will do uh, do it work, uh, and the rest of the uh, code should uh, get executed and should not wait for uh, its uh, completion. So that's how the promises work, and that's why we are using the async and await function. For using the await function, uh, we need uh, the function needs to be, uh, sorry uh, a await keyword. The function needs to be uh, in async. So when uh, we uh, talk about this function, uh, this whole function is now an asynchronous command uh, command of uh, block. Uh, so it means that uh, it would give a promise uh, that uh, okay you can uh, continue executing the rest of the code, and I will I, if there is a problem, then I I will give you an error. And if uh, I get the data, I'll uh, give it uh, back to you. So that's uh, why we need to use await and async over here. The main uh, the main reason would be that uh, when we fetch data from the server, we cannot halt our whole uh, browser uh, till the uh, till all the data has been fetched uh, because then it would make the loading process much more uh, longer. 
so just to skip the uh, skip that time uh, while the whole browser is being rendered the side by side the fetching uh, function uh, because of the async function would uh, would keep on fetching the data from the api hence uh, the uh, loading of the uh, website would be uh, much quicker uh, because while the uh, whole ui is being loaded the data is being also fetched side by side so that is the only reason for using an async and await function so it, uh, as you can see that inside my async function which is the fetch data and it uh, stores whatever the data is being uh, get uh, we are getting from the api inside my response variable and as you can see that it uh, uses the await keywords and after that it is uh, using we are using the uh, command library of axios to get our data which is axios.get uh, and inside the parenthesis uh, is our api from we are aware we will be getting our whole data now after that i am using the setter function of the use state variable data as you can see that this is the setter function uh, which is set data which would uh, give us the response which would uh, add our or you can store our you can say the store our data inside my uh, set data now you might be wondering why i am using respond.data.products now to answer that uh, first i will have to show you how i am getting my data from the browser only so as you can see that uh, this is the data that uh, the API is giving me. Uh, so in, in this, you can see that uh, we are getting an object and object contain multiple things. So let me uh, to make it a more visually appealing. I will simply print it just a second console. Dot log. Response. OK, uh, so let me go to my uh, browser and inspect element. Now we'll go to our console. So as you can see that, uh, yes. So here uh, you might be wondering just a second. Let me just arrange it. Okay. So uh, when we store our data inside a variable using the Axios library, then what happens is that uh, this response uh, becomes a whole new object. And the data that we are getting from the API is in stored with the key value data. So as you can see that, this is the object that the response uh, is currently representing and inside our object when we go that uh, you can see that it has multiple key value pairs but the thing uh, but the uh, key that is holding our data which are get we are getting from our api is inside is with the key data so if we click on that as you can see that this is the data and it holds our products uh, data that we are getting from the api so uh, that's how uh, that's why we are using uh, that is the only reason that we are using uh, response dot data over here now why are we using dot products over here uh let me just uh, clear out this console first hmm. just again let me just refresh okay uh let's do this yes uh so this is our products uh data uh let me uh just a second not this uh, let me response Okay. So as you can see that uh, the data was holding the data, uh, the data was holding all the data that is coming from the API. And how is it coming? It is giving us an uh, object and what does object contains? It contains the keyword product and a, a product, uh, the products keyword contain an array and, e array and inside an array, each and every object is, uh, is a separate product. So as you can see that the length of the uh, our product array is a uh, products array is 30 and which means that there are 30 uh, objects inside our uh, array. So when we go inside of it, as you can see that this is an whole array of 30 uh, products. So uh, as we know that the our data is holding the arrays, uh, not the object. So that's why uh, to uh, give uh, it access to the products uh, array, then what we do that uh, we got, if we first uh, go to the a response that uh, use the dot operator data which would give us the uh, whole uh, data which we are getting from the api and then inside that object as i told you that api is giving us the uh, object as the data and inside the object there is the products uh, key value uh, pair and the products hold our main data in the array format so to access that what we are doing we are again using dot products to give uh, our data only the products uh, array not the whole object uh, that comes along with it so that's why we use response.data.products. And if I, as you can see that, uh, if we uh, gave it the response.data, uh, then it would return the whole array 
uh, sorry it would return it uh, the object uh, of the product but we want to give it only array so if i write over here product products so it you can see that it would give us the only the uh, array uh, itself not the whole product so this console is uh, with response dot data this uh, line this output over here this output over here and this is with our response dot data dot uh, uh, products so as you can see that this is the array data only so that's why we use response dot data dot product over here now uh, this is how the function is working after that uh, coming out of the function we are simply calling the function to uh, start the fresh fetching process and this is this uh, empty array is our dependency array as i told you the use effect uh, runs only once and whenever there is the modification inside a uh, dependency array or the values of the dependency array, then the use effect would st uh, start the repainting of the whole web page again. So uh, as you can see that uh, it is empty over here. It means that uh, the use effect won't be, uh, would be only rendering once, uh, or you can see that it would be only rendering for the first uh, load only, and it would uh, not uh, repaint the whole uh, web page because it doesn't uh, have any dependency element inside uh, its array. So after that, uh, as we know that uh, the data would be holding our uh, main array. Now, how am I rendering it? Uh, how I'm printing it all, all of it? So as you can see that first I created a show variable using the let uh, keyword and inside of it, I use data dot map because I told you the data is uh, holding the array of objects and each object is, is the detail for each and every product. So we are using the map function to return an array of uh, cards. So uh, what I did uh, is that I used bootstrap over here because in the example as well, you can see that it is a bootstrap card. So uh, first, uh, when we go to the bootstrap, uh, there is two tags that we need to embed in our, uh, two tags that we need to embed in our index.html, which is the link tag and the script tag. So when we go to our link tag, as you can see that this is the link tag uh, that we, uh, sorry, this is the link tag that we have to paste. And in the script tag, when we come that, this is the script tag, as you can see in bootstrap. This is the uh, script tag for the, our, uh, the card that we are using. Uh, why we do that? So that it can uh, import the uh, data from the server and uh, we can uh, it can apply all those necessary changes in the card. So this card uh, starts from this div and goes till this div. So uh, as you can see that the word uh, map function would be returning. It would return. It would be returning an array, a modified array of the original data. And what does that modified data contains? It contains the uh, this uh, HTML code uh, for the data, and uh, it would uh, uh, first give the uh, each and every parent div tag its own unique uh identification key which is its index because each and every element has its own unique identification through its index so this is really important because if we want to edit a specific card and we do not give uh, any card its specific value then what would happen is that it would make our job very hard to edit a specific card only so after that these are the styling that i did for the card uh, to make it uh, look a bit more center and increase its size so after that, uh, as you can see that this is the image. So now we're coming to the map function. Now, what uh, does the inputs, uh, the map function would be taking from the data array? Uh, so as we know that data is the array of objects. So res is representing our object and index is our representing our uh, each object's index. So as I told you, he's uh, you, uh, getting the uh, unique indexes of each and every product. And how am I getting my uh, images? Now, once again, we'll go to the R console. Uh, just a second. So as you can see that this is the array that the map is currently holding. Now, each uh, each object contains the elements like, as you can see that brand, category, description, uh, discount percentage, ID, and image. Image is uh, image key uh, holds an array itself, which is the multiple uh, image addresses. Uh, as you can see that these are the uh, five image addresses inside my uh, Im image key, uh, which is uh, which represents the product's uh, image uh, as it is uh, self-explanatory. So as you can see that uh, to get my images, uh, first I created an image tag, and then in our SRC, uh, SRC I use the curly braces. Uh, of course, uh, the curly braces I'm using curly braces over here to escape into my uh, to escape out of the JSS and write the JS command. So what I am doing is that 
I am first using the object uh, that the map is getting, which is uh, res, then dot operator to access its key. And what key am I uh, accessing is uh, images. So when we access the images, uh, the image contains an uh, array of five, uh, length five. So I can pick any of the images. So I use the first uh, link, which is the uh, at zero index. So uh, as we know that uh, to access any element at the specific index, we use the curly braces along with the array name. And we men uh, mention the index uh, inside those curly braces. So as I told you, first object, then dot uh, let uh, the dot operator lets us access the image key, uh, keys value. So what is the value is our array. So after that, I mentioned that I want the uh, first address, which is at zero index. So that's how I am getting my uh, image address. And that ha that's how image is being displayed. Now, after that, I, uh, just a second, I gave the uh, title. Uh, so as I told you, uh, the uh, array of object, the objects inside my array contains multiple things. And it also contains my title. As you can see that uh, it contains title, which is iPhone 9. So that's how I'm printing my iPhone 9. And to give numbering to each and every card, I use, I also displayed uh, index dot uh, index plus one because we know that uh, the uh, index value is uh, starts always starts from zero, but we do not want to show the uh, each and every product serial number in that uh, manner. We, we want to show, show the first uh, product serial number as one. So that's why uh, I used index dot plus uh, index plus one over here uh, to give it a proper numbering. Uh, so that's how uh, the uh, we are giving the proper numbering and that this uh, that dot title uh, will give us our title uh, from the data we just fetched. Now, similarly for description, uh, again, the rest uh, object, which is in our uh, products array, uh, contains description as well. As you can see, right? just a second. Yes, yes this is uh, the description over here. So that's how I'm uh, representing my description. And similarly, uh, when we come to uh, come to for uh, come to the button, uh, similarly, the, the price, uh, when we come to the data that we have just fetched, uh, there is a price key value pair as well. And uh, that is how I'm uh, uh, showing my price for each and every product uh, uh, by first uh, printing my dollar symbol and then using the curly braces to get my uh, price from the res object. So that's how the map function would make uh, the uh, array of each, uh, uh, make the array and each element would comprise of this whole uh, HTML code. And after that, when we come to the return command, it would simply uh, return a div parent uh, or div uh, tag with the class name parent. And then we are simply uh, printing our whole array uh, using uh, the show data because as I told you, the show contains uh, the show, uh, sorry, so show variable contains the array and each array and each element inside my array uh, contains my each and uh, specific card that has gone through this map function. Uh, so that's how I'm printing all of my cards. Now coming to the uh, out, uh, output, as you can see that there are around 30, uh, 30 cards, but uh, in the example as well, it was showing us, uh, us the out expected outputs as, as a list of 15 products. Now, how are we going to achieve that? Now for us to achieve that, uh, we need to uh, reduce the array size. So how are we going to do that? Uh, what we'll do is that we'll use the slice function. Uh, so it would give us the extracted portion of the uh, mentioned index. So as I'm using slice over here, it means that data dot slice. So it would give us the portion of our uh, data array. So till when to where. So I want the, my array uh, from zero index till 15 minus one. As, I uh, as we all know, the last uh, ending index is not included in our uh, extracted portion. So it would give me till uh, zero to 14 index, which is 15 minus one. So the map function would only perform till uh, zero to 50, uh, till zero index element to 14 index element, because that is the only uh, data that the map would be getting. So when we come to our uh, website, uh, as you can see that, the, there would be only 15 products. As you can see that there is only 15 products, not all 30 products. So that's how we are extracting a small amount of uh, data from our uh, whole data that we are getting from the API. Uh, well, that's all for uh, this, expl uh, this explanation. And you can find the repository to this project file, uh, link to the, uh, to the repository to this uh, project file in the description. Uh, that's all, thank you.